Hello, I'm Christina Salinas from Fanlander Video Blog, where fans share their passions for good entertainment. I'm in the beautiful Hollywood, California, at the Dolby Theater. Tonight is Paley Fest, a must-see pop culture event produced by the Paley Center that brings fans together with talented individuals behind our favorite shows. Scheduled to appear tonight at Paley Fest is Outlander. The panelists include Diana Gabaldon, the author of Outlander, Ron Moore, the producer of Outlander, Tobias Menzies, the actor who plays Black Jack and Frank, Sam Hewen, the actor who plays Jamie, Katrina Balif, the actress who plays Claire, and our moderator for tonight is Kristen Dos Santos. Needless to say, the excitement is through the roof, and we cannot wait for our Paley Fest to start. So how long have you been an Outlander fan? I first read the books in 1999. I was a bookseller at Brentano's in Century City. We don't have bookstores anymore, but um, that was when it all started, and I've been hooked ever since. I'm a pretty new fan. I started reading the book in October, and I watched the series, I think, in November. And right now, I just finished The Fiery Cross. Uh, I, since 1998, I found Drums of Autumn first, actually. And then when I realized it was a series, I went and bought them all and started from scratch. So, I've been an Outlander fan for 22 years, so 1993. That is awesome. Hardcore fan here in the house. Yeah. Woohoo! Uh, about 22 years. Wow, long dedicated fan. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I first started reading the books about 2001 and have been hooked ever since. And as far as being a television Outlander fan, from the second that they announced it was going to be on, we were there, ready for it. So. so how do you feel being here at Paley Fest tonight? I don't know if you can tell, but I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> kind of a dork, but that's okay. I, I will own my fangirl. I think this is so exciting. This is like Disneyland for me. I've been looking forward to this day ever since I bought the tickets. I bought the tickets secretly at work at 9 o'clock, trying to, trying to buy them and taking out my credit card and not let the boss see. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It'll be fun. Super excited. There's a whole group of us together and we just it's been so much fun just the last couple of weeks planning for it and getting ready and doing our t-shirts and everything else. It's just been a lot of fun and so we're super excited. Well I'm thrilled as always. We try to get to as many of these functions as we can and we're very lucky being in Southern California that a lot of them are done here in Los Angeles but a lot of us have traveled to Seattle and to New York and San Diego. Anything we can do to support the fandom we're there. I'm totally excited. It's awesome to be able to see. I was at the Outlander Invades LA, and it is so fun to see them in person and to see the little interactions that they have that you don't catch on camera. And meeting all the fans and being here with friends that I've just met, including you, um, it's totally awesome. And plus being in Hollywood, and it's just really fun. It's exciting. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, there's, you know, there's been other events that, uh, like one of the events that I went, the first event that I went to, I went to alone. I didn't know anybody, and which was so outside of the box for me. And my husband was surprised. He was like, I can't believe you're doing that. And I said, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be surrounded by my people. You know, it's, it feels great to be here and to share this with so many other people that have such a love for something that I love and hold so dear. What do you think Sam is going to be wearing tonight? Do you think he'll be wearing a kilt or a pair of pants or neither? <laughs> I, ooh, neither is not an option I thought of, but um, I like that option. But I am hoping he's wearing a kilt because he looks super, super sexy in a kilt. But pants will do. But kilt would be my number one choice. <laughs> now, he said neither. But that would be quite scandalous, um, although I'm sure that everybody would thoroughly enjoy that. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping for pants, because uh, you can see his bum. <laughs> I, I prefer the, I like the pants. The kilt's great. I love the knee porn, but uh, he looks nice in a pair of pants. I think he'll be in trues. <laughs> Did you hear about the Twitter? He tweeted, no pants, no kilt. 
and that got everybody in up in arms, just you know, speculating what he was going to wear tonight. So long as he's not in a gold and white dress. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> well, I would like to think he'd be here in a kilt, but he'll probably be in pants. Because people have been cheeky with the kilts, and so he'll probably be safe and wear pants. I'd rather he was in a kilt. I hope he's wearing a kilt and a leather jacket, because he wore that at the very first thing they did in L.A. at the Orpheum Theater. It was stupendous. He looked great. And you just can't get any better than that. I have to agree. I, I saw the panel from that, and I was like, yep, that's our boy. <laughs> you knew the minute you saw him that he was Jamie. Oh, most definitely. What could the panelists reveal tonight that would make this Paley Fest just totally special for you? That they're going to continue the series at least through the Voyager book. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Everything? They could call me up on stage and go shut the front door? No, that's terrible. They could... I thought it was the F word. A lot of people did. I got a lot of messages about that. They like, can't believe you said that. I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> so it was shut the front door. Yeah. Uh, that was very fun. That was very cool. Uh, I don't know where that came from because I cuss like a sailor. So <laughs> telling us they've got seasons three and four in the, you know, and they're ready to go. That's, that would be awesome. It'd be amazing if we got some insight on who they cast for season two. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> I'm like dying to know who Brianna is. Hello. Dying to know who Roger is. Fergus, yeah, I'm definitely dying to know who yeah. those characters are. Definitely. Well, I'd be happy with just getting Jamie out of the window. That'd be awesome if they could show the beginning of the next episode. That would be fabulous. But I mean, if I had like my dream of dream, wish of wish, it would be maybe some footage of when they go up to the stones. That would just be like, oh. So any kind of footage would make me supremely happy. That would be the best. I think if they reveal exactly what might happen in the jump in Drums of Autumn, or Dragonfly in Amber, I mean, when the age range changes, I would love to see how that happens. I think that that change is what actually has kept a lot of us longtime readers going because we have aged with Jamie and Claire. We may have started out having read Jamie and Claire when we were 30 or some people 20, whatever, but now a lot of us in our 60s and 70s, I'm 60, and the joy that Diana has written a book that has carried on a healthy love and sex life just thrills us to pieces. So we expect that Kat and Sam and Ron are going to do it for us. I'm sure that will be what I would love to hear about tonight. They could reveal some casting choices. They could give away one of the costumes. Um, they could um, auction off Sam. <laughs> um, they could, but I think what I'm kind of looking for is I'd kind of like to know in the second season, is there anything they're going to learn that they have to learn besides learning French? Like maybe dancing at the King Louis court, something like that, you know, something little tidbitty. Looking back on the first part of the season, what was your favorite scene and why? So they arrive at Casa Lyoc in episode two and uh, Claire is tending to Jamie, uh, to his wounded shoulder, and he holds her in the embrace. That is one of my favorite. It's just so touching and just so heart-rendering. And then, obviously, I just love the wedding episode, the entire episode, from beginning to end. My favorite scene was when Jamie was in front of the fire before she fixed his arm. It was early on. And I think that's my favorite scene because that's the first time I had really seen Sam play Jamie. I didn't even know who he was. Obviously, he looked very nice. <laughs> and that was my favorite scene in the, when I read the book. I didn't even really know what the book was about and how it was going to play out. And I remember putting the book down going, I don't know who this Jamie guy is, but I love him. I had no idea that the story was even going to turn out to where they were the hookup. <laughs> Oh gosh, there's so many. I gotta tell you, the one that really sticks with me the most is literally the last episode when, you know, um, Blackjack has Claire and Jamie jumps in the window and he just, Tobias just gets that little smile on his face like, isn't this great? That and the, the whipping scene, the flogging scene, 
was just so insanely powerful and just so gruesome and so well done that I, those are the two that stick with me the most. They're just fabulous. You know, I really liked parts of the wedding um, where it really showed Jamie's dual personalities, the humor, the love, the affection, um, the heart that he has for his family, those kinds of things, all the different aspects of him. And then I think the surprise is Angus and Rupert. That's just really an enjoyable surprise, and I can't wait to see more of them. Oh, my favorite is the wedding scene, you know. I mean, it's just, when when you see Claire for the first time in her dress, I mean, I just, it gave, I mean, it gives me chills now just thinking of, you know, picturing that and thinking about it, and to see Jamie and all of his finery, and, and just like the whole wedding, the, the wedding night, and I mean, that's my favorite. That's what I looked most forward to. This is horrible. It's got to be the very end with Tobias as Blackjack when Jamie pops in the window and he just that, oh, that laugh. I'm like, yes, that's what we've been waiting for. Just that crazy, oh, just that mean, awful, nasty. And they left us there for how many months, him sitting there on the window? I know, I know, about as long as that. I can't say it because it might be a spoiler. <laughs> Who are you most looking forward to seeing tonight on the panel? Katrina. And Tobias. And why is that? Well, I've had a lot of Sam lately. Yeah, you're so lucky. So, and not that I wouldn't enjoy seeing Sam again because he's fantastic. I would love to see Katrina. They were fantastic and I actually got to see both of them on my birthday back in January and they both wished me a happy birthday, gave me a hug, it was very sweet. She just seemed so cool. Like, you just want to go have a drink and just hang out and like just, she's so badass. I just love her. She's great. And Tobias just because Tobias. I mean, we haven't seen much of him and I'd like to see more of him. Not that way. <laughs> <laughs> Most looking forward to seeing Sam, but I'm excited to see all of the panelists. Tobias, I think they're all going to add just, you know, their own uniqueness and Katrina. And obviously I, I just love watching Diana speak. I think Ron will give us some really good insights into the upcoming season. So um, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing them all. Do you relate to any of the characters in Outlander? And if so, who? Oh man, um, that's a tough one. I think I can relate a little bit to Claire. She's adaptable. Um, I am from another country, and so um, people are always amazed when I tell them I just came here on a whim and I ended up living here. And I know that I, I can adapt to any situation. Um, I'm comfortable, you know, being anywhere. I, I would just make friends and adapt to my circumstances and my environment. So I think I can relate to Claire. Did I relate to? Yes. I don't know, probably Rupert more than anyone. And why do you relate to Rupert? He's just a, he's just a fun guy. He's kind of uh, lean toward Mrs. Fitz, which sounds silly, but I just love her. She's just so sweet and she's so welcoming and she doesn't care who you are if you're some strange English woman from nowhere at, who just shows up on your doorstep and she's going to care for you and take care of you and dress you and feed you and love you. And I just love that about her. And so I've always loved Mrs. Fitz uh, for all the books. So I feel like I relate to Claire. Of course, everybody loves Jamie Fraser, but the thing that really sells the whole story to me is that Claire's a strong woman. She can drink whiskey and she can swear, and I can do all those things. I can't mend somebody's wounds, but I, I can do the other things. And I am a hardworking person, and I think she stands up for what, you know, she does what she wants to do. I definitely, I'm definitely the same way. <laughs> Has the star's production of Outlander lived up to your dreams and hopes of Diana's books? Yes. A resounding yes. I didn't know what I wanted, but they gave it to me. And what's different is just more. It's just, I still have my book. I still have my favorite characters. I, st I, st I still see my characters in my head. This is just more. We just have more. That's all it is. It's more. It's awesome. It's better. I didn't go out with any expectations. I was like, I'm going to love this no matter what. It's history. It's Scotland. It's my favorite books. Anything they do is going to be great. I understand how the casting process goes completely. I really knew that it was going to be difficult to find people 
you know, the hair color doesn't bother me, any of that stuff. I know these are real people playing these parts, you know, it's, it's, it's acting. I really had no expectations. I was just excited it was going to happen. He's way over exceeded my expectations, absolutely. Well, there's a few things that, you know, a few lines, maybe key lines he could have put in. I'm over the moon with the whole thing. I think it's awesome. And the fact that he is including Diana is huge for me. And then she's also here for all this stuff. That's huge. I love that about him. Yes. I think having Diana as the consultant is the key here to make sure that the books really stay true. Having her here, it brings it all together. And she's like, she's the glue that holds us all together. She connects with her fans so well. And she's such an amazing, brilliant person. And um, I think he's smart to include her. The chemistry be between Sam and, uh, and Katrina, without a doubt, it's they are Jamie and they are Claire. So for me, that's the it factor. And, and also, Ron has done such a fabulous job with staying true to the story. So I, and that means, that means a lot as a fan for so long. You know, there's so many other series that they, they, they veer off the path so far, and, and Ron's doing a phenomenal job. Well, you know his wife, Terry, would probably kill him. Yeah, she would kill him if he, if he veered off too far. Oh, yeah. So yay for us that we have Terry on our side. That is for sure. Yes. What is the it factor of Outlander? What makes Outlander so special? I think that for me, it's the combination of the historical, it's the combination of the medicine and how it's used in that time period and dropping a person into that era with the knowledge that she has, the foreknowledge is really, really fascinating to me. And I think then it's the writing. It's just so phenomenal. It's cons it's fluid and, and you, you say, you know, like, where did she get that dress in, in certain stories? You know, how did a dress just appear? Well, in Diana's books, everything makes sense. It's like she explains all that. It's very, it's not like things just happen for the sake of the book. And I think she's a brilliant writer. She makes me think about all kinds of different things. Love, marriage, our society, money, how history repeats itself. All those kinds of things go through my head as I'm reading them. What I love about Diana's ability to write is she never uses the same metaphors more than once. She's always changing up the metaphors to fit the scene. Like if it's hot night, she's writing about the stickiness of the heat. Or um, if it's a cold night, she's pulling in the fire. What do you think about that? I, we were just talking um, on the way here in the car about Breath of Snow and Ashes, and I was saying I really look forward to the kidnapping scene because when she writes it, it's so enthralling that I, I can't, when, when they, not to have a spoiler, but there's a certain part where I myself can't even breathe. And I think it's just so phenomenal. And I think that's why it takes her so long to write a book, because every single word is thoughtful. She, she thinks about every single pairing of word, every single sentence, and she just doesn't slap it out. That's what makes it special. I totally agree. Oh, Claire. I mean, really, I mean, we all love Jamie, but really, it's Claire. It's, it's a female-driven perspective. It's a female-driven show, and, and, and her character is so strong and so well-defined. And she, you know, opens her mouth and gets herself in trouble, but she's also really driven, and she's just a really strong character. And that, I think, is what people are connecting with, is because it's not something we have in TV right now and in movies. It's not as female-driven as it could be. And I think the wonderful thing about Stars and Outlander doing is just that now they're getting a taste of what a woman force can do when they love something. And you see these fans and we're getting involved and we're getting out there and we're doing all this crazy stuff. And so I think that that's really what's pulling the most. I agree. I mean, we have the SoCal Outlanders, the NorCal Central, <laughs> the NorCal Central Valley Outlanders, and we get together and I think it's like, it's total women power. It is. It absolutely is. And it's something that we are severely lacking in TV and movies right now, and I think that they're finally tapping into that and they're starting to generate more. I mean, they've done other stuff with Marvel and Agent Carter and some of the characters in the Marvel Universe. They're really starting to pull the women forward, and I think we're, I'm hoping that we'll see more of that. I'm thinking that we'll see more of it soon, but I'd like to see a lot more of it, so putting our money where our mouth is. All right, let's hold up our flag. So Cal in the house. For months, we have been anticipating Paley Fest. Jenny Jeffries at Snisky Bob Free on Twitter put in her own two cents with her very creative and fun Paltry Feast panel main lineup. 
The panel started off with a swig or four or five of whiskey with the game, Nared That I Aired, from Kristen's Scottish granddad. I thought this was genius on her part because it helped to get them relaxed and ready for some harder questions, and it was just good fun. When Kristen asked, Nared That I Aired, Gone Skinny Dipping, On or Off Set, the audience exploded with cheers. Sam definitely had a very cheeky and fun expression as he immediately drank. Would have loved to have read his mind at that moment, wouldn't we all? After this fun game, Kristen got into some serious questions. She asked, Ron and Diana, I know that there are a lot of dark scenes coming up for the second half of the season. What can you tell us about that? And do you think this is a darker arc that we have seen in the first eight episodes? At first, I was thinking, why is she asking this question? We all know the answer. And Diana's response helped to confirm my thoughts when she responded with, let me ask you, how many of you have read the book? And the audience just exploded with a resounding confirmation of cheers. I loved Ron Moore's thoughtful response to this question because it confirmed to all of us viewers that this is why he even considered producing this show. The ending of Outlander does have an unexpected twist. He was fascinated by the journey the audience would take with these dark scenes, and he realized that the actors would be challenged in their acting skills. To quote Ron Moore, the finale. This is a weird word to use for the end of the book. It is a satisfying ending, a sense of completion for what we are doing. You know, it culminates. Yes, feeling the double entendre here. Mm -hmm. As I looked over, uh, Kate definitely had this huge smile on her face and she was laughing. I think it is an ending worthy of the story. It is a great finale. It will take us to places you were not expecting to go. This is what great stories do. Now, Kristen was about to speak, but Diana, she had the last words. I loved Diana's comment that never has she seen two people do such courageous things on screen before. They really did a wonderful job. Diana then raises her glass in toast to them. As an author, This must be one of the most fulfilling moments for her to see her words on page come to life and to be elegantly portrayed by these two fine actors, both Sam and Tobias. Kristen was brilliant. We just had a run of very serious questions, and it was time to change it up. Her version of the newlywed game, Sam's always the creative one, and he pulls in Tobias saying that they're going to team up. Poor Kate is all on her own. Kristen asked how many times have they watched an episode together. When they revealed the two, I could not help but wonder which episode it was. I'm sure all our minds went to the wedding at that point, and they both guessed too. So I think this is a good sign that all is going to work out in the end in regards to Jamie and Claire's relationship. And then Sam's saucy little remark to Tobias, you need to rub me out had the audience in a tizzy fit as Kate bashfully placed the whiteboard over her face. We were in heaven. The next question was word or phrase that Sam says all the time. When Sam revealed, it's great, I could not help but laugh. Of course, the audience did as well. But what was so funny was earlier in the night when they were talking about Kate and Tobias filming in the 1940s and them riding around in the wonderful vintage car, Sam hands it up and says, They were in such awe, so lovey-dovey, everything is great. There was no doubt in my mind that Sam uses this phrase often, and we need to have some fun with this on social media, lol. So here you go, a fun meme I made. Word or phrase that Kate says all the time. Loved, loved when Tobias and Sam hid behind the whiteboard to consult. Kate looked a bit stumped at first. She knows the bad words she says. And of course, Kristen's all, oh, you can use those. The big reveal for Kate was shit. 
And for Tobias and Sam, with the hours they keep on set, I can just imagine that caffeine is their friend. Or to help them get through those emotionally challenging scenes, having a double shot of whiskey might come in handy. Kristen did not disappoint as a moderator. Her question asking, did any of you anticipate such an incredible passionate fan base? And what has been your relationship with the fans thus far? Had me grinning from ear to ear. Diana immediately responds to this question. For the last 23 years, she has witnessed the Outlander phenomenon. What an incredible journey she has been on. And with wrong bringing the story to the big screen, the Outlander obsession is rekindled. What an amazing gift for both Diana and her fans. Kate's elegant response demonstrated her poise, thankfulness, and appreciation for the fans. I was touched by her words. She graciously thanked the fans for all their fundraising for her charities. Fundraising is no easy task. A shout out to some of the fans who are raising funds for both Sam and Kate's charities. The fans are supporting the World Child Cancer Charity, supported by Kate, one such fan group is at hashtag Catriot Challenge, raising thousands of dollars, and Catrionation, raising over $28,000. The SoCal Outlander Facebook Club joined in on Sam's My Peak Fitness, hiking Saturday and raising funds for his charity, which is for the Leukemia and Lymphomia Research. Another person I want to recognize is on Twitter. Her handle is at Magic Unicorn. She is known as the Cow Maker, raising over $13,000 for Sam's charity. And to name one more, I wish I could name everyone. Donna Carbach of the NorCal Central Valley Outlander Facebook Club. She is making a beautiful quilt to be auctioned off for Sam's charity. Way off in the audience. A viewer yells, Sam, are you going to run in the marathon? His sassy response has us all wishing we could be his water girl. If you're running in front of me, yeah. The audience went wild with that one. Sam then responds with, yes, I'm running in the marathon on Sunday. Segue into Sam's cheekiness. It is very apparent that Sam loves the ton and cheek play. He is a very active member on social media which only endears him to his fans tenfold. His recent response to my Twitter question, asking him what he would be wearing to Paley Fest, which was, no pants, no kilt, had everyone speculating on his attire for the evening. Here are a few ideas. Knitted tartan shorts, prom dress, God's holy trousers, just to name a few. Brigadoon at Brigitte Jean had some fun with this one, making the Ten Commandments meme. It was fitting since Sam had not shaved and he was looking rather biblical. As we know now, he came in his suit looking very put together. Claire and his hair rather matched. I cannot leave out hashtag Sam's fan follow. For seven weeks, Sam followed a fan. The follow was selected with winning fun games or... A deserving fan was selected. Here is a photo of the Laird Fraser's seven women who were his hashtag Sam's fan follow. There is no doubt in our minds that Sam is a very generous, fun-loving guy, and his interaction with fans is dearly treasured. What makes Sam unique is his willingness to be vulnerable to his fans, which takes kindness and courage. Kristen opened the questions up to the audience. My hands are in the air like I just do not care. Oh, by the way, that was my daughter, and she was quoting the character O from the new movie Home. The sister-in-law who was almost left out, and thank God she was not, because we loved her question. The question was directed to Sam. You are playing a sex symbol, a sex symbol for two and a half decades. So how are you dealing with the pressure of portraying Jamie Frazier? Every woman's ideal man. 
OMG, Diana's response was priceless. I think she turned a shade of red that was close to a tomato. As she covered her face, Sam's response was one of disbelief. As he looked to Diana for some help, if he had spoken at that moment, it would have been, help me, please, with that pleading look. Sam's response was humbling. He flattered the character. We cannot leave Claire out. She also has been a sex symbol for two and a half decades. She is a strong woman who knows what she wants and is not afraid to make her pointed demands in a very erotic fashion. After the sex symbol question was asked, I noticed that Kate looked over to Sam and she was able to side skirt that one, but maybe not so much in the future. Fair is fair. Paley Fest was an amazing evening filled with lots of laughs and thoughtful questions and enjoyed by all. Eileen, how are you feeling right now after Paley Fest? Oh my God, I am like just shaking on cloud nine. I talked to Matt Roberts forever. He knew me from Twitter. Meryl remembered me from Outlander Invades LA. And I am like on cloud nine. And I got a selfie with Sam. And I got... You I, got a selfie? I got, yes, I got a I just, do um, I was really lucky. The people around me were really nice. And one of the gals um, said, here, let me grab your camera and I'll try it and do the selfie for you. And she didn't think it turned out. And then she goes, oh, my God, it did turn out. And I'm like, yes. That's awesome. You're going to put it on your Facebook and oh, Twitter? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. I've already put, like, as much, a lot on Twitter, but more is going on. I haven't had time. <laughs> and, and I got Katrina and I got Ron. Oh, my God, I got everybody. And that, Tobias, and I got Tobias. There are signatures? I got all their signatures. I didn't get a picture with, I got a picture with Meryl and Matt and Sam, not with Tobias, who I would have liked, but I can't be that greedy, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> it was very exciting. It was great. Wonderful. Great experience. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Um, I liked their answers. They all seem like really somebody you'd like to know you know, the actual actors and, and Diana, of course. I love her sense of humor, so. Were you shocked or what that we actually got to see the whole episode nine? Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Everyone like, everyone that at home is like, oh my God, we're gonna kill you. Cause I right away tweeted that I'm watching episode nine and they did, went crazy. I, I still can't believe it. We were, what a, what a treat. An unexpected total treat, the whole episode. Definitely, and we're not going to talk too much about it, but... No, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody. I'm not going to tell anybody anything, just that I saw it. I was not expecting it, and it was a huge surprise, and I could not be happier. Either could I. So, did Episode 9 live up to your hopes and dreams? Absolutely. It exceeded expectations, like Outlander always does. Fantastic. It was such a wonderful, amazing experience. I can't believe we got to see Episode 9. That was just such a bonus. I just thought we were going to see maybe some trailers and just have the panel. So I'm very excited that we got to see that tonight. I was not expecting to see episode nine. Um, I thought I was just there for the panel. And then when I saw it, I really didn't believe it, believe it after I finished watching it. And I still can't wrap my mind around it. Now I just can't wait until it comes on television because I want to watch it another three or four times. Uh, it was the be It was better than I expected. The idea of being able to see a whole show, we were very lucky. I mean, it, it, it met all the expectations and Droughtlander is over. For me, anyway. So what did you think of that one scene when... Psych! Spoiler alert! There has been lots of speculation for who the mystery woman is in the trailer. All I'm going to say is that it is not Jenny Jeffries at Snisky Bobfrey the first episode on big screen there's just nothing like seeing it on big screen it was just you could see every little eyebrow twitch every little piece of naked flesh shall we say <laughs> um, everything and then being so close to the actors and actresses and watching their interaction um, the whole thing was just amazing just amazing what are you most looking forward to in the second part of the season that's coming up that's starting in April I'm most looking forward to 
you know that the you know the big dramatic you know the big torture scene you know that's the one because it has the most emotional impact and for me I love things that are you know very sad and dark so I just can't wait till that is imagined on television the part of the abbey the part of the abbey which I'm not going to give spoilers but that is my favorite part in the book I think that's Diana's shining moment where no author will ever come even I think she raised the bar with that chapter more than she already had already so I'm very excited about that. I agree. Uh, when Claire saves him. Yes, and the way she does it and the writing. The writing was just unbelievable. The whole thing's unbelievable, but that particular chapter is my favorite. Uh, the witch trial, Galus, and her shenanigans <laughs> with them being trapped by the town and Cranesmuir and all that is going to be so exciting and seeing Jamie rescue her and then also Claire rescuing Jamie. I'm looking most forward to that. Kristen, our moderator tonight, how do you feel she did? I think of all the moderators I've seen, she is by far my favorite. She's just real natural at it and she's fun. She, she makes it fun. She doesn't ask the everyday questions that everyone, every moderator asks. I agree. I thought she really changed it up a bit by having the games. What did you think of the games? I love the games. She, and she makes it fun for the actors too. You could tell they were really relaxed and they were having fun. And we got to see that a different side of them than when they were asked the same old questions all the time. And that was great. I enjoyed it a lot. I agree. She's obviously an Outlander fan. What did you think of the game they were playing uh, with the little boards and... Oh, that was hilarious. Um, their questions and then Sam and Tobias, you know, ganging up and trying to figure out, you know, because they were both married to Claire. So that was really funny. 